I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. I want to show you in this Inkscape tutorial how you can make this paper depth effect, this 3D cutout effect. I'll show you how to make this quickly with the drop shadow settings. And if you haven't used the layers and objects menu yet, we'll go into the basics there. I also want to say thanks to everyone for your comments and all the people that shared their feedback on the last video. That's the longest one I've ever done. If you're new to Inkscape, this is 50 minutes of how to get started using Inkscape from day one. I walk you through all the toolbars, the basic tools, settings, and techniques that you need to know so you can get started creating rather than just staring at the screen. And today's tutorial most certainly builds off the fundamentals from this video, and it's free. It's on this channel. Check it out. Let's get started here. I'm going to open up a new Inkscape canvas. Here we go. Let's all get on the same page. Literally go to file document properties and the pop up menu. I'm under format a four. That's just the template for the page here. I'll click over to landscape orientation and close out a shortcut to center up the page is this icon right here. This magnifying glass with a rectangle or just push number five. And there we go. This technique will work on any size page in canvas. But if you want to follow along, it's easier if we're all in the same ratio. Go ahead and grab your stars and polygons tool up in the control area. I have it set to star rather than polygon corners five spoke ratio 0.5 rounded zero random zero. I'll drag open my star. If yours doesn't look like this and you have the same settings or if it's way off for any reason, this arrow with an X hit that that will bring you back to the default. If you want to change the color, that's going to be found under the fill and stroke menu object fill and stroke. I'm on the fill tab with flat color selected. Why don't we make it lighter? Something like a gray blue. The stroke tab I have off, so there's no stroke. Stroke on, hit X, stroke off. Now I'm gonna show you the fast way to do this. With my star selected, I will do Control D. That's gonna duplicate it. And for the sake of clarity, I'm gonna change the new star that's directly on top of the bottom one to something light. Holding Shift and Control, I can grab a handle and bring it in to wherever you please. With the new one, I'll do control D that duplicates this gray one. We'll go back to a darker shift and control, bring it down again. The colors don't matter at all at this point. I'm just doing it so you can see different stars. Control D duplicates it, make that one lighter, bring it down. For this one, I'll hit it again so I get my turn handles because in experimenting, it did look better if things aren't uniform. That's why I don't care about getting precise spacing because I don't want it to be perfect. I'll do one more control D that goes back to dark shift and control. Maybe spin this a tad that way. That's enough layers for this exercise, but I want to save the bottom one control D I'll take it aside. Hmm. Opacity isn't full just to be safe. I'm going to make this whole thing full opacity. Okay, save this one for later. And I think I'll save the top one for later. All right, here's the effect. It's very simple to do. I'm doing it all at once. I'll grab everything. And you want to go to filters, shadows and glows, drop shadow. It's a simple menu. You have options and blur color for options. I have the blur radius set to 1.4 and you can't see anything yet because I haven't clicked live preview horizontal offset and vertical offset. Put it to zero to begin because it's a good habit to zero it out. You'll see if you play around with it, the settings you use for one project won't actually look right for another one. So bring it to zero. Shadow type today, we want inner cutout live preview. <laughs> there it is. So that's pretty good right there. We can let me show you how it works. If you do want to change the vertical offset or horizontal offset, the vertical offset is if you want to imagine a light source pushing the light and the shadow longer in one direction. Let's go to 1.4. I think I had it see that it looks like if the light source is above it, it's slightly more towards the top. I could turn this around after, but I can do also negative 1.4. Now I have it on the bottom and horizontal. Should we try just regular 0.4? That's good. I keep seeing on Instagram, people talk about the new drop shadow should actually be based on the color of the object. If you click over to the blur color tab, it lets you do that. Actually, if I hit use objects color, they were all blue. Now it makes the drop shadow blue, but not today. If it looks good to you, hit apply, close out of it. It's looking pretty good already, but let me show you how to work with this now so you can change the colors and things to make it more manageable. I'm going to grab all of them. Control G to group it and let's throw a touch of blur at the very bottom here of the fill and stroke menu for blur. You can drag the slider or you can punch in a number 3.0. 
We can use the parts we saved to make the descending paper layers have color. When you're on the selector tool, you have your hierarchy buttons up here. I'm taking that saved star and putting it on the bottom. Lighten it up. And our other save star will be the base to make that part white. I'm dragging it freehand. If you go to this magnet thing in the corner for Inkscape 1.2, that's snapping. When I enable snapping, it will do a better job for me right there. See that? It clicked itself in to this node right there, or it might click into the center point. Wherever you want is fine. This one I'll make white. Drop that down to the bottom, up one step. <laughs> there we go. Now here's where the layers and objects menu can come in handy. If I start clicking around randomly, I'm not sure what I'm going to be grabbing. The group of shadows, is this the base layer? There are tricks. If you hold alt, you can keep clicking on things beneath the top layers. And if you hold alt, you can bring that layer out. There's that white star from the bottom, but then it gets a bit messy. Go up to object layers and objects. If you're coming to Inkscape from a different program like Photoshop, you're probably very used to having the layers open all the time. It's pretty intuitive. The highlighted blue here shows I have a star shape, which is convenient path 10115. I can toggle the eyeball open and close to see that is definitely the white star. You can click on it and change it. We'll call it base star. That tells me that this other star path is the blue one. We'll rename that one the blue one. <laughs> so where's the shadows? Well, that's the G. The G stands for group. If I hit this delta, I can see the parts. There's the bottom shadow, each layer. When I was setting up this tutorial, I was doing each layer one at a time, and this whole thing was filled up with duplicates and copies, and I found that this is much simpler, quicker, and efficient. Plus it lets you pick things with ease. I'll take the blue one, I'll duplicate that. Let's change it green for now because I'm gonna use it as a clipping shape. I wanna make the surface area of this page a little bit darker than white so it shows more depth. Maybe we'll throw a gradient on there. And I can do that by making a rectangle. For now it could be gray. Drop that down one step. And I'll knock out the star shape from the gray rectangle by selecting both of them going to path difference. There we go. I have the rectangle selected. Back to fill and stroke. Let's throw a gradient on it. It's hard to see the gradient when it's actually in white. Let's make it blue. You can adjust the gradient from this new slider bar or go to the edit gradients tool. One side of the gradient here, this is the blue side and the default takes your gradient to transparent, which actually isn't as good as we want. I can click this circle or this end down here. A stands for alpha. We'll make that opaque. When you're on the edit gradient tool, you can grab either one and change the direction. That looks cool. How about that? Let's do that. I also want to show you how you can put something at the bottom down here, like that red ball. The way you do that is with a clip group. I'm going to go into the layers and objects and choose base star, right click, go to set clip group. I see the scissors in the folder here. And a good practice is to do right click again and enter group. You'll see the blue bar get slightly darker, which means you're inside the group. I'll go to circles and ellipses as tool. Holding control, I can draw open a perfect circle. And there it goes right in the clip group. When I go back to selector, I see it highlighted. But remember, you have to hold alt to make sure you grab it and see how it goes underneath. You can let go of alt once you're holding it. And there it goes. You can bounce your ball around anywhere you want. You can put anything in the clip group. Let's do something else. We'll do enter clip group, drag in this mystery object, and let's see what it is. <laughs> Why don't we end here? Thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, let me know and see you next time.